Hello, everyone. I'm Jai Chen at University of Virginia. I'm very happy to be here to present our work, Topological Transaction for Hybrid Future Learning. In this work, we study future learning. A future learning problem requires the model to solve tasks with very few labeled examples. The key challenge is that in the data scarcity scenario of future learning, the deep neural network which is required for solving tasks will suffer from model overfitting or collapse due to few labeled examples provided for training. More recent works solve future learning in meta-learning paradigm, treating each future task as an instance sample from a task distribution. The key idea of meta-learning is to generalize some common knowledge about this task distribution from meta-training future tasks and utilize the knowledge to help accurately and rapidly solve new tasks in the future. And typically, the training data within each task is called support data, and the testing data in each task is called query data. Beginning from here, the motivation of our work is the application of future learning in web domain. Where we aim to quickly learn new web concepts without sufficient supervision. A feature of web content is heterogeneous information, as web concepts delivered to users are in different forms, like video, images, text, audios, and so on. And usually, web data may be frequently unavailable, so web instances may be represent represented by different combinations of modalities. So a problem of using existing meta-learning approaches in web domain is that they assume a well-defined uniform future setting where all the tasks have identical feature space. This will limit their applicability in the heterogeneous web content where data is more complex, multimodal, and non-identically distributed. We formally define such future learning setting as hybrid future learning. In this problem setting, each data sample is unimodal or multimodal web concept, which is naturally heterogeneous and uh, difficult to collect a complete set of modalities. So the support and query data samples within each future task is further divided into multiple feature spaces, where each sample is associated with an additional indicator, um, BI, to specify which feature space it belongs. This indicator is used to distinguish each sample from others so that different types of data will be treated differently. So what challenges in hybrid future learning rather than the typical uniform future learning? The first difficulty is that since the few labeled samples in each task is further di are divided into multiple feature spaces, in each input feature space, there would be less or no labeled samples for each class, which potentially escalates the general data scarcity and overfitting problem of virtual learning. Also, we can observe there could be a hybrid number of labeled samples per class in each space. Uh, for n-way k-shot field shot classification, where each class has k labeled examples, each field space and each class end up with less than k short or even zero-shot label samples. This also brings difficulty to model training. So in order to solve these challenges, we first think about heuristic solutions using existing approaches, which mainly focus on the uniform problem setting without heterogeneous feature spaces. The exact answer can be divided into inductive inference and transductive inference approaches. Inductive future learning has been more widely studied than uh, transactive future learning, including metric-based, optimization-based, and task-specific algorithms. However, um, these approaches presume the samples in a task share the uniform feature space. Transductive inference has been recently used to choose a future task, which has shown a substantial improvement over inductive counterparts as it utilizes uh, an unlabeled query data to obtain more representative class distribution. Based on how the model incorporates unlabeled data, existing transductive approaches can, can be separated into implicit and explicit method. Implicit transductive method directly use the entire unlabeled feature information to enhance the classification boundaries 
that um, explicit method measures the underlying relationship between data to enrich class features. One may think of using heuristic solutions to enable uh, existing methods to solve our problem, such as unifying all the tasks input, converting them into uniform setting by using some um, pre-precising strategies like imputation or reshaping. Although these heuristics can work, pre-precising strategies may introduce extra noise to the original task, which has negative impact on the performance, especially in low data scenarios. One may also think of training uh, alignment function to unify the training data from heterogeneous spaces, but the accuracy of such a, a task-specific alignment function still relies on the limited number of support examples in each input space. Therefore, um, these heuristics are not the optimal solutions. In this work, we consider how to solve the two challenges by directly learning from um, the original task consisting of heterogeneous feature spaces. First, we find that inductive inference-based meta-learning is not able to alleviate the two challenges because it is impossible to fit a single shared model for the data from different types of input space because naturally different types of input cannot share the same network architecture. What is more important is that um, there may be the case that the feature space of an n label results do not even have any annotations in the support set. So alternatively, if we train a um, transactive meta-learner which can incorporate un unlabeled samples during task adaption, we are able to gently learn from heterogeneous content in both support and query set of tasks so that the model can capture extra information about the relationship between heterogeneous spaces. So in this work, we use transactive inference-based meta-learning. Um, the purpose of transactive meta-learner is to adapt model parameters to the given task's underlying geometric structure, which is unclear. Uh, however, we have one more challenge here, that is the task structure. The underlying data relationship within a hybrid future task is more complicated and hard to learn because we need to capture not only the relationship between samples within the same class and from different classes, but also we need to learn the relationship between samples across different feature spaces. However, existing transactive methods solely rely on a common uh, matrix function to measure data relationship. So that cannot deal with the complicated geometric structure on um, heterogeneous data samples. So in order to solve these problems, we propose a topological transactive meta-learner. The main idea is to explain the model structure, which connects all the samples in the given task to represent the underlying geometric structure of hybrid fusion task. We are going to learn this unknown and not heterogeneous graph such that the complicated relationship between different types of samples will be captured during the process. This figure shows an overview of our network. It consists of three modules. First, a structure learning model is used to capture inter and interclass relationship between data points that share the same type of feature. And second, we have a heterogeneous graph neural network to capture the relationship between different feature space. And finally, we use a multiple perception as the classifier. More specifically, in the first model, we construct an initial graph structure where each node represents a multimodal or unimodal sample, and each edge represents the semantic similarity between samples. The input is all the samples in the support and query set. The output is a heterogeneous graph consisting of node features and edge features. We first use a multi-channel feature embedding network to extract the feature from each modality. Here, we do not fill the missing modalities by zero. So the missing modalities are kept blanked. Uh, and given the embedded feature set of each modality, the node features, each i, 
are the concatenation of modality embeddings and are heterogeneous because each sample have different types or different combinations of modalities. Um, the edge feature is complicated as the similarity between a pair of heterogeneous nodes is unclear. We can only learn data similarities in each modality. Therefore, we let the initial edges contain multiple views of similarity measurement. Each view is calculated from a modality. Such multi-view connections can be represented by a tensor. So after this graph, uh, this structure learning set, we end up with a multi-relation graph where uh, which connects different types of nodes. Um, after initializing the graph, we perform transductive inference using a graph network. The input is a, a heterogeneous graph with complicated connections. The output should be a simple homogeneous graph. The key idea is that use, during this message passing through edges, we can automatically achieve multi alignment and uh, leverage and lying geometric structure of the task. More specifically, uh, not and edge features are alternatively updated because they rely on each other's current information to obtain a better representation. The not features are updated through neighborhood aggregation, which take into account the edge feature information. Uh, in order to aggregate semantic level information from heterogeneous node, at the first GNN layer, we use different not encoders for the non different spaces. And the update of edge features, which represent data relationship, relies on current node semantics. This process can be viewed as a tension mechanism as the uh, updating scores of neighboring nodes are calculated using a tension function. So, and in order to reduce the parameter size, as the, the at the first GN layer, we sum up each view to comp to compress the dimension of the edge feature. In practice, we stack two GN layers to perform space alignment. The alternative updating procedure is supervised by these support labels so that the learned structure will get more relevant to the true class distribution layer by layer. This slide shows the training of the entire model. The training algorithm is similar to optimization-based uh, meta-learning. The green arrows are backpropagation for inner loop task adaption, which is supervised by each task support labels. And the pink arrows are backpropagation for updating the meta knowledge, which is um, supervised by the query labels over a batch of tasks. As for experiment, since we define a new problem setting for heterogeneous web content, we have simulated two hybrid few shot classification data set using two existing multimodal data set. The first data set is for bird species classification and has two modalities, image and text. In the simulated hybrid task, each sample is either an image or a text or the combination of image and text. The second data set is for 3D model classification and also has two modalities, which are two views of shape representations for um, of each 3D model. Again, in this simulated hybrid task, a sample can be represented by view one or view two or combined two views. In all the experiments, which sample belongs to which feature space were randomly assigned. Uh, and we use a hyperparameter to control how many samples in a task have missing modalities. Here we report the results of our proposed method compared with three families of previous method including inductive inference, transactive inference, as well as recent multimodal future learning methods. Um, all these baseline methods were designed for uniform future learning and cannot naturally fit for the defined uh, hybrid task. So for fair comparisons, we use zero values to fill the missing modalities on the input set and um, remain their model not changed. In contrast, our proposed method directly learned with the original heterogeneous data. This table shows the classification accuracy result on the query set of meta-testing tasks. 
uh, where the number of um, grading update during fine tuning is fixed to 10 steps. And in each task, a half of samples have missing modalities. From the result, we can observe that our method outperform baselines when the task has more than one type of samples due to missing, missing modalities. The reason might be that the, the zero imputation bring, brings some extra noise to the baselines in contrast to our model, which directly learn from present data from multiple future spaces can avoid such noise. To sum up our contributions, first, in order to quickly learn new web concepts from heterogeneous contents without sufficient supervision, we have defined a novel hybrid future learning problem. Second, we have addressed the three challenges of hybrid future learning rather than the typical uniform counterparts. And in order to overcome these challenges, we proposed a topological transaction meta learner, which explicitly model a heterogeneous graph structure to jointly consider the information of all the samples in the given task. And then using graph neural network to capture the underlying relationships between heterogeneous samples. Finally, our experiments demonstrated the effectiveness of the proposed method, which directly learn from original task without imputation, rather than using existing method after imputation. So this is the end of my presentation. If you're interested in this work, more details and results can be found in our paper. Thanks for your time, and I'm glad to take any questions. Um, yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, and yeah, brilliant work. And with that, uh, I'll open the floor for questions. Feel free to again unmute or ask them on chat. And while everyone is thinking, uh, I sort of have a question. Um, so yeah, Jay. So yeah, mm -hmm. I I noticed in your paper that you had an experiment which compared your model with different uh, hybrid ratios. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I also noticed that as the hybrid ratio was increasing your model's uh, performance was getting much and much more and more better relative to the other methods. So I just had a question as to if you can comment on why do you think this was happening? And um, mm. yeah. Yeah, uh, I think this um, because this is because our method doesn't uh, directly learn from the original space. And in other baselines, we try to using zero to fill in those missing modalities. So um, so they introduce extra noise and our model uh, is not 